is full of lies, in exactly what sense is it going to inspire my faith? Now, here's the point, and I don't want you to miss it. What's happened in the minds of these scholars is finally they have concluded something. That the portrait of Jesus in the New Testament is a whole piece of cloth. They could not find the seam that would separate the historical Jesus from the Christ of faith, the Christ with the miracles. So, in light of the fact that they came up with this welter of contradictions and subjective opinions, many scholars now throw up their hands and say, we don't know anything about him at all. We don't know anything. You see, they were faced with this thing. Either you accept the portrait in the New Testament as it stands... Or else, you simply toss the whole thing out and say, we don't know anything about him. And that's why you have scholars saying, we don't know anything about Jesus. It's not because there isn't evidence. The the New Testament's got all kinds of things in the manuscript evidence for the New Testament is excellent. But if you're going to say, I'm not going to accept a miraculous Christ no matter what, the best thing you can say is to simply say, You know, when it comes to Jesus, we don't even know whether or not he lived. Because because that's the only way, that's the only place for you to go once you've rejected the whole thing. You either accept it all or you reject it all. You see, friends, when you look at quotations like that and you read about these scholars who get this press, remember something. This has very, very little to do with scholarship. It has everything to do with unbelief. Unbelief, a fundamental unwillingness to grant Jesus any miraculous qualities. And so that's what you end up with. And that's actually why I, in my heart, when I read scholars saying that, I say, well, of course, of course. If you're not going to accept him, all that you can do is to toss everything out. But, of course, if you're a scholar, you'll be quoted widely when you do that. Now, folks, let's just talk about reality, okay? Let's pretend that this is not a message. This is actually just a a classroom for a moment, just for a moment. You need to understand that if you evaluate the manuscripts of the New Testament and do so like you do any other historical document, you put it through the tests of reliability and consistency, and, and you take it through the most scholarly and the most rigorous evaluation that you want to give it, you come to a miraculous Jesus because the documents of the New Testament are proven to be very reliable, very reliable. And that's what you come to. So we have nothing to fear from scholars who want to do analysis. You know, it says in the Bible that this was not done in the corner. And when Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus Christ was raised and that many people saw him, he said, if you don't believe me, ask those who are still living who remember him. In other words, we're talking about actual historical realities. And when you analyze the New Testament like that, we discover that it has the marks of authenticity, of accuracy, and historicity. That's where it's at. And then we come to a miraculous Christ. There, there he is. And we accept him. We accept him. Now, what I'd like to do in the next few moments is to ask a question. Because, as you know, this is a series of messages entitled Seven Reasons Why I Believe the Bible is God's Word. I gave an introductory message And then other messages, this happens to be now the fourth reason why I believe the Bible is God's word, and that is because of Christ. You see, having come to Jesus in the New Testament, we now ask the question, what does Jesus think of the Old Testament? What was his opinion of the stories that many scholars tell us didn't happen? That becomes a very important issue for us. If Jesus is our Savior, is he also our teacher? Is he also one whose opinions are valuable to us? Well, I hope so. Just look at this. He believed in the historicity of the Old Testament to its details. This is Pastor Lutzer. I remember hearing someone say that only a person who is omniscient would be able to know if all the details of the Old Testament were accurate. What this person didn't realize is this, that in Jesus, he has his wish. Jesus is omniscient. Jesus knows all things. And yet there he is, affirming the historicity of the Old Testament, talking about Moses, speaking about creation, 
mentioning Adam and Eve and all the way down the line. So I conclude today by simply saying this, that Jesus believed the Old Testament. Can we believe any less? At the end of this broadcast, you're going to be given information as to how you can obtain a copy of the book, Seven Reasons Why You Can Trust the Bible. Because in hearing messages like this, you need to think again and again of what is being presented. And this book will be a blessing not only to you, but to other people. And so I suggest that you read it, share it with someone else. My burden is to help individuals, whether working in a bank or office or hospital, to be able to dialogue with others and give a reason for the hope that is within them with meekness and fear. Thank you, friend. You have a good day, all day. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Today, Erwin Lutzer brought part one of The Christ of the Bible, another message in his series, Seven Reasons Why the Bible is God's Word. Tomorrow, more about how Jesus treated the Scriptures. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago. This series is now in print as Seven Reasons Why You Can Trust the Bible, and this book can be yours as our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. For details, call 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Online, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or write to Running to Win at Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. This is Dave McAllister. Tomorrow, more about the Christ of the Bible. Join us for our next Running to Win.